Welcome to SWK's video series on Sage 100. This video is going to show you how to set up a new company in Sage and the basics for the General Ledger module. We're going to start in Library Master Company Maintenance and I'm simply going to create a company code called New and I'm going to call this NewCo. And of course you can see how I have addresses that I could fill in, but we're just going to do this fairly briefly. I need to come up and activate um, the uh, modules that I'm going to be setting up. And I'm only going to set up General Ledger. I do need to click on the first two because otherwise it's going to come back and tell me that I need that. So let's just go do that. And what has now happened is the basis for me to begin with the general ledger module has been set up. Let's switch over to our new company. And if we come to general ledger, it is going to fuss at me a little bit. And, and I'm just going to pick on anything and it says it's not been set up. And yes, we do want to set up the module now. It goes through a very nice wizard, but to start, if you click on the little hyperlink here, there are some very nice um, help um, instructions that you can go through that will give you some of the basics, especially look at the overview before you begin, and that'll give you some idea on how to prepare. We're going to follow the wizard. The first thing we need to do is to create an account structure. We have some uh, nice options here where we can create a structure, meaning do we have a main account, do we have sub-accounts or departmentalization, however you want to refer to that. Do we want to copy it from a sample company? And what's kind of nice is if I click on one of these types of industries, I can click on the main accounts that this would set up and it would give me an idea of whether or not this was suitable for my business. I'm going to come back and then we also have the option of copying it from another company. So if you have a company already set up in Sage and the business is similar and you want to use similar uh, similar chart of accounts, this might be a ni nice option too. Again, we are able to view the chart before we actually choose it. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to create our own. This is going to be something new. It defaults to a three character main uh, number. I'm going to change that to four. And then I'm going to add a second segment. And this will also be numeric. I do have the choice of alphanumeric. And I'm going to make this two. And I'm just going to call this department. You can call it whatever you want. It's just a name. Um, but uh, I can continue on. And I can have up to 10 segments. And I can use up to 32 characters. Let's continue on. We're going to bypass roll-up codes for now. And this is where I define my fiscal year. I could start at any year I want. And as you can see, I can change the number of accounting periods and where I'm going to be starting when I open this up. I'm just going to take a default. But as you can see, you are able to put in different periods ends because perhaps you don't have a calendar year or you're using um, something other than the months to define your periods. We're going to bypass budgets. And let's uh, go to the uh, general ledger options setups. There's a couple things that I um, actually like in here that I'll review with you. First, when all of the segments, and you'll see what I mean by this in a minute, if all of the segments are, are an account number, and let's say I'm doing a journal entry, uh, if they're all there, and if it's and if it's not already set up in a, as an account, do I want Sage to automatically uh, make that for me? Well, I'm not very fond of yes, because quite frankly, I make too many typing mistakes. So I like it to go to prompt. And that way, it'll say, is this a new account? And it, maybe I did it on purpose, and maybe I didn't. The other thing is if a main account, uh, do I want to be able to uh, uh, create that main account on the fly? Because what we'll see is an account number is made up of a combination of main accounts and sub accounts. Personally, I don't do it for the sub accounts because generally that doesn't change very often. 
My next option is, am I going to keep track of changes? And I rather like this because if I'm trying to figure out what went wrong in the back, uh, well, then maybe I want to be able to see a log of any time I've made a change. Sage 100 automatically sets up a retained earnings account of 320 and then however many zeros you have uh, to fill in your account number. This can be changed, but what would happen is after you create your new retained earnings account, you'll come in here in general ledger options and make that change here again. You could see that I had selected year 2020 and period one when I looked at the fiscal year. And so here we are. Of course, I can change that. And then I have number of years to retain general ledger history. I personally kind of like 10. So let's give that a try. Coming over to the entry, I can do batch processing uh, for either general journals or transaction journals, your choice. And then how do I want to reset journal numbers? I have to say I'm not particularly fond of the choices here because it doesn't reset it when you begin a new period or a new year. It resets it when you do period end processing or year end processing. So I'm not particularly fond of the other two options. So I just let it continue to run out. That way I know the order of which I have done all of my entries. We have a budget tab. We're not going to review this, but we do have a very nice uh, webinar that's been posted up on our YouTube channel that you might want to take a look at. And then in terminology, this is really how things are going to appear on your financial statements. One of the things some of my clients like to do is they will come and put all of these in caps because if they want all of their general ledger account numbers to be named, the descriptions to be all in caps, well then you want these subheadings to also be in caps. Or perhaps you don't care for the term revenue, you would rather have sales or cost of goods sold, or whatever it is that you want, you can make these changes so that it fits your business and the way that you want to see financial statements. I'm going to click on OK, and we have gone, we have really finished at this point the, um, the wizard. But there are a few more things to consider. You recall the account structure. We had named that a four and a two. I could continue adding at this point. Remember, you can always make your account numbers bigger. You can never make them smaller. Moving on, uh, we have our account group. And this is important, and I also think it's good to define this before you begin creating an accounts. What's, what's happening here is if we would create an account number that is between 0000 and 1500, so it, it would actually be ending at 1499, it is going to be considered a current asset. So you could see that these create ranges, and you can add or uh, modify the names of these. And for example, I'm going to add a new one called 6000, and uh, let's call this GNA. And the operating expenses here, how about if we call this sales and marketing? See, it's all the same. Here, of course, I have to come in and uh, define it as an expense. And the account types, this has to do with uh, cash flow statements, of which I am not setting up at this time. If I click on Accept and come back in my account group, you will see that it is now in numeric order. So you want to change these. It's so much easier to have this done right before you begin bringing in your account numbers. It just really saves a lot of time and a lot of hassle. So let's keep moving down. Our next thing is main accounts. You'll recall that I said that an account number is made up of a main account plus a sub-account. If we look at our main accounts, because I didn't choose to copy from another company, I'm sitting here with 3,200. So let's uh, fill in a couple. Uh, these are just going to be some simple ones, and this is going to be cash in bank. We'll call this cash. And you'll notice that it's putting it in my current assets, which would be correct. Next, let's put in 1,100, and I'm going to define this as accounts receivable. Uh, we will put in, uh, let's say, let's put in a revenue account. And 
And let's put an office expense. And you'll see here how it put it in under the GNA because of how it fits in with the account groups. Now, if you have a large account, uh, chart of accounts, you perhaps are not going to want to enter everything in manually. You'll want to import them. We have two ways of importing. You can use the GL Exchange or you can use Visual Integrator. I'm not going to review either one of those, but may, I just wanted to make sure you were aware that there was an easier way rather than having to type everything. Now let's come to the sub-account. I have only defined one, so when I come down and bring in department, I'm going to set up department 00, and this is going to be my corporate. So once I've done this, I, I am actually in a place where I can create my main accounts. Just to make a point, we're coming to main accounts and you're only going to see retained earnings. Once I have all of my main accounts and I have all of my sub accounts set up, I can come to a utility that says generate accounts. So I'm going to generate an account for each main and department setting that is available. If I had a second department set up, it would create actually two accounts for each main account. And you could see that I could set in the values. But let's just click on proceed. It says it thinks it's going to do five accounts. Let's come back and we will see account maintenance. And here are our accounts, and it has created all of our accounts. And I don't know if you recall, but each time I was doing something, I was putting in the short description, and it creates that the entire account description based on those short descriptions. So, of course, you could see that we could continue on uh, creating new accounts, or as I had mentioned, we can import them. Now let's uh, look at just a few other things that might be helpful is we've already talked about fiscal year and then journal, source journal maintenance. As Sage creates transactions, say if you also set up accounts payable and you do an invoice run, well it needs the AP source journal. So Sage will set that up for you. What I'm going to set up, because you'll see that we don't have anything in here other than a non-financial um, uh, journal, I'm going to set up a JG, I'm sorry, a, a GJ, and this is, uh, this is for my general journals. And I could set up G, uh, GE or J, JE, whatever it is that you like. I happen to per, prefer the uh, uh, this because it matches with the task description. But you do whatever you want. And of course, you can define when it, the next journal, what that next journal number uh, would be if you don't want to start out with one. Let's continue on and look what we have. We do have uh, roll-up codes in here, which I'm not going to review, and also we can manage memos. And hopefully most of you will, in, inside of Sage, have seen memos. When I come to account maintenance, let's just bring up this first, I have the option of putting in a uh, memo. I'm just going to put something in here just so that you can see this real quick. And if you want this to pop up, uh, you are able to say, okay, I want this always to display because I have some instructions. Maybe you want to make sure people are not using this account uh, when they shouldn't. So it's a nice way of being able to alert someone. Uh, for example, if you have a, uh, if you're using the um, accounts receivable module, you're not going to want to do a general journal entry when you are, uh, that goes directly to the accounts receivable module. You'll want to do all of that in AR. So you might want to put a little warnings that don't do this, don't, don't use this over here. Uh, just some of the nice ways that you could see some use some of the interesting features within Sage 100. 
Okay, now that we have a limited chart of accounts set up, we could actually start doing journal entries. Um, or we could set up the rest of our um, uh, accounts, either by hand keying them, entering them in through GL Exchange or Visual Integrator. And then I'm ready to continue on with another module if I so desire. Just one little hint, if I want to um, say set up accounts receivable or accounts payable, let's come to new, I'm going to have to activate them before I can actually go through the setup wizards. If you try to do this without the wizards, it will give you a little prompt and ask you if you want to come to company maintenance to do so. Well, I hope this has given you a little idea how you set up a new company for whatever that purpose might be within your Sage 100. Hope this helps you get more out of your Sage 100. We're here to help you. Uh, we have a great uh, consulting team and a help desk that is uh, just waiting to be able to help you. Thanks for watching.